ओम ज्ञान तिमिरंदस्य ज्ञानंजना शलाखया चक्षुरुल्मिल तमयेना तस्मय श्री गुरुवे नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित भूतले स्वयं रूपा कदाम ददा स्वदाक वंदेह श्री गुरु श्रीयुत पद कमल श्री गुरु वैष्णवांश श्री रूप सागर जात सागण रघुनाथ सत सजीव साधवेत सवदूत परजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पादान सागण ललिता श्री विशाखा हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचना गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचा कल्तरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधरा श्री वसादि गौर भक्त वृंदा नमो विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमती भक्ति वेदाता स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारणे मूकं करोति वाचालम पंगुम लंगाय ते गिरी यहां वंदे श्री गुरु दीन धारण परमानंद माधव श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य ईश्वर गुरव गौरचंद्रा राधिकाया तदाल कृष्णा कृष्ण भक्ताय तद्भक्ताय नमो नम जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय निनंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद पंच तत्वात्मक कृष्ण भक्त स्वरूपक भक्तार भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्त शक्ति नमो महावदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नाने गौरात्र से नम अजानुलंबिता भुज कंखा वात संकर्तन का पितर कमलायताक्ष विश्वांबर द्विजाबर युग धर्म पाल वंदे जगत प्रिया करो करुणावतार आराध्यो भगवान व्रजे सितने तथा वृंदावना रम्या काचि दुपासना व्रज बधू वर्गे नल्पिता श्रीमद्भागवत प्रमाण मम्ल प्रेमापुमाथो महान श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभुर्मत तत्राधरा हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू एवरी वन फॉर ज्वाइनिंग so we have done first four verses which were most important and relevant to us and uh, we'll continue with the fifth verse today <clears throat> so let's um, so you know the first verse was i'm going to share my screen here the first verse was uh, cheto darpan marjanam this verse mentioned about the sankirtan movement the seven benefits of the sankirtan movement how it cleanses your consciousness how it stops the fires or dangers of this world by getting you out of here how it gives a long term benefit benedictions or shreya and your consciousness blooms um just like the white lotus blooms with the moon rays how it is the husband sankirtan movement is the jeevan the pran of the transcendental knowledge vidya vadu jeevanam how it gives ever increasing uh, bliss at every step and does not stop keeps increasing and complete whole pure bliss it gives sarvatma sanapnam it bathes all the living entities that comes in contact with it so that shri krishna sankirtanam may may be victorious may always be victorious may always be glorious param vijayate shri krishna sankirtanam then second verse so this is shri krishna sankirtan which is basically chanting of the holy names either in your personal sadhana as japa or in congregational chanting as kirtan um or when you do the naam roop gun leela kirtan of um, krishna in the form of hari katha or by following various limbs of devotional service that can all be called sankirtan typically anything to do with the names or with the pastimes of krishna is called sankirtan then um, mahaprabhu talks about the 
benefits or the potency of this name, potency, the, that Lord has put all the potencies, all the energies in his names, Nij Sarva Shaktis. And he has so many names, millions of names, unlimited names, and they're non-different from him. Then he laments that I am so unfortunate that I have not developed any taste for these names. Then he says, how can we keep chanting these names continuously, steadily, um, without break? Nirantar Harinam. How can we do that continuously? Satatam Kirtayan Toma. How can we do that? So he says, you need to have these four qualities that you have tolerance, you have humility, you do not expect any respect, honor or credit, etc. And you give all respect, honors, etc. to others. And then uh, he said that we should cleanse our desires. We should not have too many material desires. We should have spiritual desires. And he's himself asking that I do not want any wealth or beauty, beautiful wife or um, very uh, good birth or good body or a lot of wealth or a lot of uh, followers, a lot of knowledge, etc. I do not want those things. All I want is that I want ahituki bhakti, birth after birth, life after life. So let's uh, go to the next verse today. So uh, remember, we are reading from Chaitanya Charitamrit, Antilila. The last chapter of Antilila is called Shikshashtaka Prayers. And here, um, remember that Antilila happens in the last 18 years of Mahaprabhu's life. Out of those last 18 years, the last six years of Mahaprabhu's life were very, very um, confidential pastimes um, where he basically confined himself to that little room in Kashi Mishra's house. And this time when we went, we had the opportunity to see that little room. It's called that room is called Gambhira in Kashi Mishra's house. And in Gambhira, he stayed. It's it's like a six by six room. It's very, very small room. And such a tall man like Mahaprabhu, it's hard to imagine how he even fit there. But he spent all his time there and he would associate with uh, very intimate associates. Even the Regular associates of his, he had stopped meeting them by that time. He would just associate with very intimate associates. Two of those were Swarup Damodar Das and Ramanand Rai. And Mahaprabhu has recited these eight verses before while teaching to his different disciples. Okay, He has uh, given various teachings to his disciples and during those teachings, he has given these eight verses to them before. But in Antilila, when we are reading, then right now he is not teaching. He is in a mood of ecstasy and he is um, saying these verses again to Swarup Damodar Das and Ramanandrai. Okay? And in between, he says some other verses also that we have been uh, covering. So yesterday we read till verse 4, which finished at uh, 29. So... 30, 31, actually, we did not read. So we have to read those. So remember, he gives a little more meaning or import to what the verse that he mentioned. So he said, na dhanam na janam na sundarim. So he says, next thing he says is, dhana jana nahi mango kavita sundari, shuddha bhakti deha more krishna krepa kori, ati denne puna mage dasya bhakti daan, apa nare kare samsari jiva abhiman. So here he stopped. Then he says this next verse, verse 5, which we have to cover today. Ainanda tanuja kinkaram patitamam vishame bhavam budhau kripayatav pad pankaja sthitaduli sadrisham vichintaya. O my Lord, O Krishna, son of Maharaj Nanda. So I means O, O my Lord. Nanda, Nand means. Uh, uh, Nand Maharaj. Tanuja means son. So son of Nand Maharaj. O my Lord, O son of Nand Maharaj, Krishna. King Karam. King Karam means servant. The way I, I remember this word, King Karam is, I, I think of I think of kan, kankar, you know, like a pebble. That I want to be just a pebble, like a, like a little stone. So that's how I think. But King Karam means, means a servant. Then, oh my Lord, oh Krishna, son of Nand Maharaj, I am your eternal servant, King Karam. Patitam Maam, I have fallen. Where? Vishme. Vishme means this horrible, this, this poisonous, this dangerous, Bhavam Budav, this ocean of material world. I have fallen into this ocean of material world. Kripaya, please. 
तव पाद पंकज योर लोटस फीट स्थित दूली स दृश्यम विचिंत स्थित दूली प्लेस मी एट योर लोटस फीट एज धूली एज अ पार्टिकल ऑफ डस्ट एट योर लोटस फीट स दृश्यम विचिंत प्लीज बी मर्सीफुल टू मी प्लीज प्लीज कंसिडर दिस रिक्वेस्ट Our Guru Maharaj always says this. Please consider this request if you so desire. This is exactly what Mahaprabhu is also saying. Please consider this request and place me as a particle of dust at your lotus feet. Uh, let let us read um, next um, three verses also because he'll give more details. So in this verse, basically the uh, he's asking to become a servant he's giving us the original our original identity what is our original swarup our original spiritual identity and that is to be a servant to be a kinkar of krishna okay that is what he is giving so then he says tomara nitya das moi tomara pasarya padiya chori bhavar nave maya badhana i'm your eternal servant but i forgot your lordship i forgot now i have fallen into this ocean of nations and have been conditioned by the external energy maya baddha hana maya badd ho gaya hu main i have become controlled by this illusory external energy of yours and bhava arnave arnav arnav also means ocean i have fallen in this bhav arnave in this bhav sagar or bhavam buddhi i have fallen hmm? and i have forgotten my relationship with you कृपा करी करा मोरे पद धूली समा तुमार सेवक करो तुमार सेवना बी कॉजलेसली मर्सीफुल टू मी बाय गिविंग मी अ प्लेस विद द पार्टिकल्स ऑफ डस्ट एट योर लोटस फीट सो पद धूली समा एट योर फीट प्लेस मी एज अ पार्टिकल ऑफ डस्ट कृपा कोरी ही इज आस्किंग फॉर दिस मर्सी तुमार सेवक दैट आई एम योर सर्वेंट सो दैट आई मे Engage in the service of your lordship as your eternal servant. Tomara sevak. I am your servant. Karu tomar seva. I want to engage in your service because that's my nature. My nature is to be a servant. My nature is servant. So my best position will be to be given service of your feet. So I just want to become your servant. So he's telling us. He's reminding us of our original identity of being a servant. Then he says. पुना अति उत्कंठा दैन्य हाईला उद्गमा कृष्णा थानी मागे प्रेमा नाम संकीर्तना नेचुरल ह्यूमिलिटी एंड ईगरनेस अवोक इन चैतन्य महाप्रभु ही प्रेड टू कृष्णा टू बी एबल टू चैंड द महामंत्र एंड एक्सटैटिक लव सो यू थिंक प्रेम नाम संकीर्तन टुडे आई वाज वाचिंग अ वीडियो ऑफ ऑफ प्रभुपाद एंड समबडी हैड कैप्शनड इट सेइंग Prabhupad is not chanting Shuddha Nam, so I was very curious. What is this? What is, what are they saying? Prabhupad is not chanting Shuddha Nam. That's not possible. So when I opened it, it said Prabhupad is not chanting Shuddha Nam. He is chanting Prem Nam. That's why we call it Prem Nam Kirtan. When we go on the road, the Hari Nam that we do, it's called Prem Nam Kirtan. So like the other day, we were doing Prem Nam Kirtan. So this is Maha Mantra in ecstatic love. of course we don't have that much emotions but we still label it as prem naam kirtan um so this is what mahaprabhu is asking okay then let me show you uh, more so let's discuss this verse a little uh, this is the most like last verse that is very important for us um Here we go. So this is uh, I showed this yesterday. Um, we can come. We'll come back to this again if you have any questions. But this is the word. So let's take the word for word meaning. I, oh my Lord, Nanda Tanuja. So son of Nanda. And I'm going. I'm showing you all this because I'm hoping that everybody will try to memorize the Shikshastakam prayers. And by knowing word for word, uh, it becomes easy. Kinkaram is servant. Patitam fallen. Maam me. Vishme in this horrible, in this horrible, Bhavam Buddha, the ocean of uh, this Bhav Sagar or uh, ocean of nations, you can say, or or this material ocean basically. 
कृपया बाय योर कॉजलेस मर्सी बाय योर मर्सी तब योर पाद पंकज लोटस फीट स्थिता सिचुएट मी प्लेस मी एज प्लेस मी एज धूली सदृशम लाइक अ पार्टिकल ऑफ डस्ट विचिंतया प्लीज चिंतन कहते हैं ना चिंतन कीजिए सो प्लीज कंसिडर दिस रिक्वेस्ट काइंडली कंसिडर दिस रिक्वेस्ट एंड प्लेस मी एज अ पार्टिकल ऑफ डस्ट एट योर लोटस फीट so this verse is basically telling us our original identity that our identity is of being a servant in the spiritual world and you know that material world is a perverted reflection of spiritual world so that is why in this world you know everybody tries to be a lord tries to be a master many times propad uses this word that we have lordship mentality that we try to exert lordship over this world you must have seen this phrase lordship so we develop this master mentality or boss mentality or lordship mentality by coming to this material world this is called nations or ignorance or darkness this is called perverted consciousness so our consciousness becomes so covered that we forget our very exalted very high position of servant and we actually start thinking that being the lord being the master um is a is a higher position so in this world being a master is considered a high position and servants are treated you know badly or considered inferior but in spiritual world the more one is in servitude the more exalted that position is the more exalted they are and if you want to be a master if that's our mood that we want to be the master the controller the proprietor the maintainer that 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 position belongs to krishna so if you have that mood then that is a disqualification for going to spiritual world so so we are following this process of bhakti this devotional service we are singing this shikshashtakam prayer so we may be cleansed of this uh this um, savior abhiman that we have this savior abhiman uh, lordship mentality belongs to krishna not to the jiva Uh, and it is a disqualification for entry into the material world so we are trying to come into this mood of servant by singing these prayers by singing vaishnav bhajans by following the nine limbs of bhakti the a b c d e of krishna consciousness that is all in the hope that our consciousness will be cleansed so, so that we can understand that being a servant is the most exalted position you know when uh, prabhupad uh, uh, came by jalduta he uh, wrote uh, you know that beautiful uh, song or poem and at the bottom of that song he signed he signed the most unfortunate insignificant beggar so that is you know prabhupada is showing us the position that we have to take such a humble position of being the most unfortunate insignificant beggar and uh, chaitanya charitamrit also says jivera swarup hai krishnera nitya das krishnera tatastha shakti bhed abhed prakash we have discussed this we are the tatast shakti or marginal potency of the lord um bhed abhed prakash okay so we should understand this difference and the sameness with krishna but our original position is to be krishnera nityadas also chaitanya charitamrit says ekla ishwar ekle ishwar krishna ar sab bhritya bhritya is a very common word which refers to servant bharta is master or maintainer like we we say sometimes ye hamare bharta hain bharta means master he is my uh, like um, lord or he is my prabhu he is my bharta when we say prabhu why do we refer to each other as prabhu um, yesterday you know as listening to guru maharaj he was saying instead of prabhu one day go around calling everyone master you know we we say prabhu but we take it cheaply and we forget that prabhu means master so instead of prabhu for one day start calling everyone master then you will feel that mood of servant because master we uh, equate with a higher position so then you will give other people higher position but prabhu we have started taking cheaply because we don't understand that propad gave us prabhu word to mean that other people are master and we are everybody servant and the topmost master is krishna so ekla ishwara krishna ishwar ishwar word also means um means controller and maheshwar means controller of all the ishwaras there are many small controllers very various demigods devi devtas are all ishwaras but then there is a maheshwar sarva lok maheshwar yatva mam shanti mrichati right whoever understands this will um, gain peace 
So Ekala Ishwar Krishna are sub -bhritya. They are not Bharta, they are Bhritya. Bhritya means servant. Jare Jaiche Nachaya Se Taiche Karan Kare Nritya. Se Taiche Kare Nritya. However, he wants us to make to make us dance. That's how one should dance. Sir, taiche, taiche kare nritya. That's how one should dance. So in this way, um, we should understand our position as a servant. And you can see Mahaprabhu is saying, please place me as a particle of dust at your lotus feet. That should be our position. Uddhavji also said that, please, that I just want to be a blade of grass in Vrindavan. So gopis will walk over me um, and I will get the dust of their feet. So he, he's, you know, everybody who is a pure devotee is taking a humble position to their superiors, to their uh, seniors, to who have, you know, to the next Acharya in their disciplic succession. And Uddhavji realized when he went to Vrindavan, he thought he was going to Vrindavan to do gopis a favor. But when he reached Vrindavan, he realized that, he, that they are doing him a favor. They are his masters. So he, he wanted to be their disciple. He wanted to become a blade of grass in Vrindavan so they could be his master. So in this way, we have to understand, you know, our um, who our masters are. And uh, everybody else is our master, practically. Um, so, you know, in this world, there is a tendency um, to, you know, people, like if you go to certain places, people will put, like in restaurants and all, They'll stand next to a celebrity or a political leader and then take picture. But in spiritual world, that's not our mood. We don't want to stand next to Krishna. We don't want, we want to, it's not like we want to be right next to you. No, we want to be really back in the line. The further back in the line you are, the more in servitude you are. Jitna piche khade ho, that is, that, that's how exalted your position are. Not right next to Krishna. That, that standing right next to posing and standing right next to a celebrity, a star or a leader or a politician, you know, that's the tendency of this world because uh, we want to act like, oh, look, we are, um, we are friends with such important people. But in spiritual world, we actually say we don't know anything about Krishna. We are made of mercy. Whatever uh, my master, you know, my guru, my uh, seniors, uh, my uh, shiksha guru and diksha guru have, have taught me. I just need, I just know to serve them. I don't know anything about Krishna. Like Prabhupada's disciples, they, they actually did not even know about Krishna or had any allegiance to Krishna. They only served Prabhupada. They only had love and allegiance and faith in Prabhupada. That's how they climbed so high. Um, but, you know, we try to serve. So that's why we heard about neophytes, right? Neophytes or Kanishta Dikari, they just try to serve directly Krishna. We never try to serve Krishna directly. We serve the next person in line. And that next person offers services to the next person in line. So we serve our guru. Our guru serves Prabhupada. Prabhupada serves his guru. That guru serves his guru. And that way, the services go up the line to, um, uh, to Radha Krishna. And the mercy flows down. So our services go up and mercy flows down. So jitna piche ho, mercy aati jayegi niche. So uh, we don't want to stand right next to Krishna. That is, so we further back in line that we are. So stay in background, you know, serve simply, it's recommended. Um, and actually you can serve, you know, play a very vital role. Uh, that's why Mahaprabhu also recommended that Amanina Mandin, do not seek recognition or credit for services that you do. Um, and um, if you look at our disciplic succession, does anyone know what our disciplic succession is made of? Like what is the Swarup of our Acharyas? What are they in spiritual world? If you had to say one word, what word would you say to describe their role in spiritual world? What seva are they doing for Radha Krishna in spiritual world? Our, our acharyas, our disciplic succession. Manjaris. Manjaris, yes, they're all manjari. Right? So who is uh, um, Nain Mani Manjari? Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj is Nain Mani Manjari, right? Um, so in this way, Anang Manjari, like that. So there are so many Manjaris and they're all Manjaris who serve Sakhis. Um, uh, the Sakhis then serve the eight prime Gopis, Ashta Sakhis. Then they serve Radharani, right? And Radharani serves Krishna, like that. So, so disciplic succession also is a Manjari Dhara. So it's a Dhara. Dhara always flows down. So um, we should always, you know, take shelter of the uh, lotus feet of our uh, uh, seniors, our spiritual superiors. Uh, gurus like that. Um, if you think about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you know, he he would stand at the back uh, at the Jagannath temple. He would stand next to Garud, Garuda. 
Why would he stand next to the Garuda at the Garuda Stamba? Remember, we discussed about this. He would stand at the back because he says that Krishna will look at his loving devotee. And if I am serving that loving devotee, if I am standing at his feet, maybe his glance will fall on me also. Maybe Jagannath Ji will also look at me because I'm standing next to a Garuda Stamba. So actually, when we went there, we saw Mahaprabhu's uh, handprint. Uh, he'll stand even behind Garuda Stamba uh, and his handprint is there. So in this way, you know, Mahaprabhu always um, showed with his example that we have to take a very humble mood. But it is, you know, our unfortunate position that in, by effect of this illusory energy, we forget our true position and we develop this Abhiman. And this Abhiman, there is another word for it. The Seve Abhiman, it's also called Purush Bhav. Because there is only one Purusha. Everybody else is Prakriti. There is only one Purusha. And that Purusha is Krishna. And the position of a Purusha is to enjoy. But we develop, whether it's man or woman in this world, we all have Purush Bhav. Purush Bhav means Lordship mentality. So we have devel developed this Lordship mentality. Uh, like, you know, we want to be boss ka boss, like that. So um, and this is the effect of the illusory energy of Krishna. And Mahaprabhu also says in another verse, he says, Naham uh, vipro, na cha narpati, na pi vesho na shudro, naham varni, na cha grihapatir, no vanasto yatirva, kintu prodyam, nikhil parma, nanda prema mritabdhir, gopi bhartu. So, Mahaprabhu said, said this, right? That I have no other designations except that I am the servant of the gopis. Gopi bhartu pad kamalayor. At, at the feet of gopis, I serve as a servant of the servant of the servant. Das, das, anudasa. So, I, I am not a vipro. I am not a brahman. I am not narpati. Narpati means I am not a king. I am not vesha. I am not shudra. Naham varni. I do not belong to any varna. I am not a grahasta. I am not a vanprasti either. But kintu prodyam. But what I am? What am I? I am gopi bhartu. Again, bhartu word comes. The uh, servant. I am the, they are my masters. And I am their das, das and dasa. So like that. That's the mood of Mahaprabhu. And that's the mood we see in all our acharyas, all our teachers. When they sing various, uh, you know, Vaishnav bhajans. Uh, you see that they are asking only to become a servant. So many bhajans are there. Like this one. Um, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Dase Ranu Dasa Seva Bilasha Kore Narutama Dasa So everybody is just asking for seva. Hmm? To become a servant. Um, and Guru Maharaj also says, your seva will save ya. Your seva will save ya. So your seva will save you. So please, everyone should have some ten tangible service. This is the recommendation of Prabhupada, that we should have some tangible service, some proper service that will keep us engaged. So if, if any of you do not have a tangible service, please, uh, uh, please check with your... Uh, you know, uh, whoever you consider is your senior and ask them for some tangible services. So that's because that's the mood of our acharyas. Seva abhilasha kore narutam dasa. Do we have that abhilasha? Have we asked for services? So, um, and then there is another one that says, Sakale Vaishnava gosai daya karamore dante trina dhari kahe edina pamare that um, with a straw between my teeth, this very wretched and fallen person is petitioning all the Vaishnavas and Goswami. Please give me your mercy. Please give me um, some uh, causeless mercy of you. So like that, you know, that's the position uh, that this verse is describing our, our identity, our um, uh, uh, position in the spiritual world of being a servant. And we have to already start working on achieving that position in this material world. Uh, okay, so then the next uh, three verses, before we go to that, anybody has any questions? So this is nine stages of bhakti. Um, anybody has memorized these nine stages of bhakti? You know, we have memorized nine limbs of devotional service. 
श्रवणम कीर्तनम स्मरणम अर्चनम वंदनम दास्यम साख्यम आत्मनिवेदनम लाइक दैट पाद सेवनम हैज एनीबॉडी रिमेंबर्ड द नाइन स्टेजेस ऑफ भक्ति आई विल हाइड दिस स्लाइड हु कैन टेल मी द फर्स्ट स्टेज ऑफ भक्ति um please unmute and try to answer what Thank comes to Yes. I think I should know probably. I'm not hundred percent, but I, do you want me to try for all? Sure, sure. So first is Shraddha, or yeah. Shavnam. No, no. Shraddha and no, stages, stages. Not limbs. Oh, Nine so Shraddha, Shraddha. Yes. Adav Shraddha. Shraddha. Adav. Adav means the first thing is Shraddha. First, first thing is Shraddha. After Shraddha, you get association of devotees. So that will be called Sadhu Sangha. Sadhu Sangha. Mm -hmm. After Sadhu Sangha, uh, because of that, you get unearth and everything. Mm -mm. No, Bhajan Kriya starts. Bhajan Kriya starts. Bhajan, after Bhajan Kriya, we get unearth and everything. Yes. After unearth and everything, we, uh, we have. We are determined, uh, determined now. We are properly situated. Uh, that I remember. Um, Nishtha. Uh, Nishtha, Nishtha. Uh, so Amrinda um, Prabhu had put the pictures, right? He put rhinoceros for this one, Nishtha. That's why I was, uh, as, I, as I, I hit that <laughs> slide just now. Okay. So, um, so Nishtha, after Nishtha, we develop Ruchi. Mm -hmm. uh, after Ruchi, there, so which stage is, which number is that? Seven? Uh, six. Or six, six, mm -hmm. Ruchi. So after Ruchi, there is, uh, Lollium. Okay, so Asakti. Or, lollium is not in this. Asakti. I'll I'll oh, tell asakti. you the Lollium okay. verse also. Yes. Asakti. Okay. Asakti and then is Bhav and Prem. Yes. Okay, good. Hari Bo, very nice. Nirvi Prabhu got it. Okay. So yes, so like Nirvi Prabhu said, so yeah, I, I, please learn these. So the first is Shraddha. Everybody has to have some faith in God to start the process, right? Then Sadhu Sangha happens, the association with the devotees then bhajan kriya happens okay so shraddha sadhu sangha then bhajan kriya then you will start practicing then comes anarth nivritti your anartha start going away then uh, comes nishtha which is determination or steadiness in practice then ruchi now you have taste for it hmm? then comes attachment or asakti so now you are very um uh, like spontaneously you're uh, following the process because you're so attached to it. And then the two highest stage are Bhav and Prem. Who was the devotee that is very commonly cited to be in the Bhav? Not Nirbhra Prabhu, somebody else. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you already know the answer. Okay, good. Did anyone hear the answer? Who Who is the very famous devotee, very uh, commonly cited to be in the Bhav stage uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam? That is? Bharat Maharaj. Yes. So Bharat Maharaj was at the level of Bhav. It's a very, very high level. And imagine he fell from that, that level. And then comes Prem. Okay. So these are the stages. Now, if you remember, I showed you this slide yesterday that the first five, five verses that we have discussed so far are um, they come in the Sadhana Bhakti. Then, so Sadhana Bhakti was the first um, seven. Uh, point Shraddha when you're still just developing Shraddha you're doing some association of pure devotee Sadhu Sangha then you're doing some Bhajan Kriya then your Anarth Nivritti is going on that, that's all going on in these verses okay then you have some determination comes some um, uh, attach some Ruchi or taste comes and then some attachment comes but then 6 and 7 deal with Bhav Bhakti and 7 and 8 deal with Prema Bhakti okay so this verse that we are going to read verse 6 so you see, uh, these are the three levels, Sadhana Bhakti, Bhav Bhakti, Prema Bhakti. So the verse 6 deals with the Bhav Bhakti. Okay. So now you will see spontaneous uh, symptoms will come, emotional symptoms will come. Nainam galada shudharaya, vadnam gadgadar daya vira, pulke nichitam vapukada, tavnam grihane bhavishyati. So this says, Nainam Galada Shudharya. Oh Lord, when will my eyes be filled with the tears? Okay. Ashru. Ashru means tears. When will my eyes be decorated with the tears of love? Vadnam Gadgada Vidhaya When will my 
throat um, or my voice choke up, falter at your at your by chanting your names. Pulke, pulak, pulak sharira, right? Pulak means goosebumps. When will my hair stand on on end at the recitation of your name? Tav naam grihane bhavishyati. Bhavishyati means when will this happen? So these are the symptoms that Mahaprabhu is describing that should happen when bhav bhakti stage is reached. So at the level of bhav bhakti, the devotee starts having these ecstatic symptoms. What? The eyes tear up, the voice starts faltering, and the hair stand on end with goosebumps. Hmm? When does this happen to me? Uh, Mahaprabhu is asking. So these are called um, ecstatic symptoms. And there are eight ecstatic symptoms described in the scriptures. Okay? Those eight symptoms are called Ashta Sattvic Vikar. Okay? Sattvic, Ashta Sattvic Vikar. These should not be confused with our crying or our voice faltering and all those things. Okay? This is very, very pure. This is at the level of bhav. Okay? We are at the level of Shraddha. Nobody should think that they are at the level of Anarth Nivritti or at the level of Bhajan Kriya. We are actually, and, and um, Nirbhya Prabhu was quoting Amrindhi Prabhu's lecture. So we actually were doing a course with Amrindhi Prabhu. And he said, nobody should think that there is a level of Bhajan Kriya or Anarth Nivritti. We are at the level of basic Shraddha. Because even our Shraddha keeps going back and forth right now. So we are nowhere near Bhav. These are the symptoms of Bhav. Bhav or Premi Bhakta or Bhav Bhakta. Okay? So when we cry, we are crying or we, our voice falters, it's because of our own false ego. Okay? It's still because of, oh, Lord is, has done so much for me. Some sentiments. Okay? It is not, those sentiments are not driven by the, by the attachment and love for Krishna. And there are some people that are very sentimental. They cry easily. They may be sentimental. And some people may be even imitating. So we do, need not think um, that these type of symptoms, if somebody is, is showing, are the ecstatic symptoms of a bhav bhakta. That's not what we should, um, you know. Because typically, pure devotees of the Lord, when they have these symptoms, actually, they do not show them. They do not... Um, uh, show those symptoms in public. Okay, The genuine tears that come out of love for Krishna, they come at a very, very exalted stage. They cannot be imitated. Uh, they are not out of some ordinary mundane sentiments. Our tears come out of ordinary sentiments. You should understand this. We cry for other, we cry in, the, in a movie also. We cry for some, you know, basic things also. But our train miss ho gai, we may start crying. Whatever. We cry for many things. So our symptoms are very ordinary mundane for, uh, com coming out of false ego. But the genuine tears are out of love for Krishna. And they, they are not something that a pure devotee will show publicly. Like a um, very common incidence of a uh, passing of Prabhupada is cited where Prabhupada uh, became uh, um, emotional and his eyes teared up. What did he do? He just closed his eyes and he just looked down. And it is described that the room was full. Room was jammed out. But when he, everybody realized that Prabhupada is having this sentiment, this ecstatic symptoms, and he is trying to hold it back. He's trying to He's overwhelmed with emotion out of genuine love, intense love, but he's trying to hold it back. So everybody was quiet. The room was jammed at like hundreds of people, but there was pin drop silence in the room. Yeah. And Prabhupada only said, after like a minute or so, Prabhupada said, chant Hare Krishna. And that is what a devotee will do, chant Hare Krishna, when you are in that mood, because he, he brought himself out of that ecstasy. Yeah. So typically, the serious, mature devotees will not show these genuine symptoms. They do not like to show them. They do not make a show. Why? Because they are naturally very humble. Their natural humility will overshadow their ecstasy. So this is such an intimate relationship with the Lord that they do not show this in public. This is their humility. That they are not displaying their intimate attachment to Krishna in public. 
okay they are they are showing themselves to be just like any other ordinary person they are not showing themselves to be a very advanced devotee because it, as soon as you have genuine tears people will know that you have a very strong intimate connection with the lord but their natural humility overshadows their ecstasy and they control those ecstatic symptoms so uh, pure devotees make an effort to check their emotions hmm? um so this is this is the point that we have to understand with this verse that maha okay and but mahaprabhu when he was in gambira he was having of course all these symptoms and that is why he was not associating with public at that time the public sankirtan movement the harina was being carried on by his disciples and his uh, followers but he was not going out in public anymore because he was so much in ecstasy so much having these ashta sattvik vikaras these eight kinds of transcendental transformations were visible in his body and it's described prabhura ange dekhe ashta sattvik vikara ascharya sattvika dekhi paila chamatkar and whoever saw these those two or three people that are described to be three and a half intimate associates of mahaprabhu at that time three and a half and two of those were the ones he's having conversation with swarup damodar das and ramanand rai so when they saw this ascharya what they, they will be very very uh, struck with wonder to see the sight of eight kinds of transcendental transformations happening in this body he depicted such symptoms that have not been shown by anybody else ever before or and will never be shown by anybody else again um so those uh, and those eight symptoms are uh, being stunned perspiring uh, bodily hair standing on end faltering of the voice trembling fading of the body's color tears and devastation okay so you know that song that we sing garanga bolite habe ulaka sharinga hari hari bolite nayana habe nira that when will that day come when by saying hari hari by chanting the names of lord hari the tears will fall from my eyes i made that painting for this month of for god purnima uh, you probably have on your calendar with the mahaprabhu is saying hari hari and tears are flowing from his eyes and these tears were not ordinary tears these tears were like this like syringe like water coming from syringe like fountain matlab aise pichkari ki tarah front mein like straight not down and very profusely they will come and there is another uh, song of bhakti vinu thakur where he says oh when oh when will that day be mine kaabe haabe bolo se dina ma in that song also he says when will that day come when there will be tears in my eyes when i say hari naam when my, when i have goosebumps on my body by by chanting holy names so in this way these are the um, symptoms uh, that i wanted to share with you then let's see what does kaviraj say next or mahaprabhu says next so after that after this verse he says this is a very famous verse if anybody wants to know prema dhan bina vyartha daritra jeevan dasa kahe vot vetan mora deha prema dhan so now we have become servant of the lord hmm? so servant is saying what is my salary a servant gets a salary right vetan vetan mora दासा कहे वेतन मोरा मेरा वेतन मेरा सैलरी कहाँ है इफ वी हैव बिकम अ सर्वेंट वॉट इज आर सैलरी आर सैलरी इज प्रेम धन प्रेम धन बिना व्यर्थ दरिद्र जीवन दिस लाइफ इज वेरी पुअर इट्स वेस्टफुल विदाउट द लव ऑफ लॉर्ड एंड दैट्स माई वेतन दासा कहे वेतन मोरा देहो प्रेम धन माई गिव माई लव गिव द कृष्णा प्रेम वी आर डूइंग ऑल दिस for krishna prem that is our vetan that is our salary that we are waiting to get so dasa kahe dehe deha prem dam where where is my salary so this is what um, mahaprabhu is saying give me ecstatic love of godhead rasa antara veshe haila vyoga spurana udvega vishada dene kare pralapana separation from krishna awoke various mellows of distress lamentation and humility thus shri chaitanya mahaprabhu spoke like a crazy man so to other people he would look like a madman that's why he had stopped going out in the public in the last 6 years um remember that uh, always remember that first verse where it said vidya vadu jeevanam 
So uh, these emotions should be combined, the sentiments should be combined with the knowledge. Okay. Um, our sentiments should be shaped by scriptures. Right now, our sentiments are shaped by false ego. But the scriptures give us a vision to see this world. They give us the lens with which we can see this world. Similarly, scriptures give us the vision to develop proper sentiments also. So sometimes we have these sentiments towards you know, various things like, let's say about country or about like, you know, gender, especially people get very um, uh, offended about things. Uh, so many things, you know, we feel sentiments like anger and uh, we feel uh, sorrowful. Most of those are centered around our own ego, our false ego. But scriptures teach us the right sentiments to have. So it's not that you read the scriptures with your sentiments. It is the other way. You develop your sentiments based on the scriptures. If you read the scriptures with your previously developed sentiments, you will not get the correct idea, the right concept. If you shape your sentiments with the help of scriptures, you will get the right concepts and right sentiments. So sentiments should be shaped by scriptures. Siddhant or philosophy and emotions, they go together. Okay, Prabhupada used to say that um, emotions or religion without philosophy is just sentiment. Sorry, sentiments without philosophy is just fanaticism. And philosophy without sentiments is mental speculation. So both have to go hand in hand. If you have sentiments only, like sahajiyas, they only have sentiments, but no philosophy. Right, like terrorists, they only have sentiments, but no philosophy, no knowledge. Then it is fanaticism. Then it is terrorism, fanaticism or sahajiya behavior. But if you have only philosophy and no sentiments, then that is mental speculation. So at the level of sadhakas, we should have both. So there are people who will say, I should, I, the a sense of all scriptures is to chant Harinam. Why should I read the Siddhanta or philosophy? Ultimately, the conclusion is just... Is just uh, chanting, right? I can just chant all day. I don't need to read scriptures. No, you need to combine the, the sentiments with philosophy to get the proper mood of chanting as well. So um, scriptures or philosophy will shape our sentiments so that we have the right mood uh, when we chant. Um, so both go hand in hand. It's like vidya vadu jivnam. That's why vidya, the vadu and husband, bride and groom need to be together. Okay. Then comes the next verse. These two are quick because uh, they are very, very elevated mood Mahaprabhu is showing. Yuga itam nimeshena chakshusha pravrisha itam shunya itam jagat sarvam govinda virena me. So here <clears throat> Mahaprabhu is saying, Yuga itam, like a yuga, a millennium, is like a nimesh or like a moment. For me. Sorry, the other way. A moment is like a millennium for me. A moment of separation from you is like a yuga, is like a millennium for me. Chakshusha pravrishayatam. When um, tears flow from my eyes like torrents of rain, shunya tam jagat sarvam, the whole world becomes shunya or void. Govinda virhiname, in the separation from my Lord. So Mahaprabhu is saying, that this whole world becomes void or shunya in separation from my Govinda, my Lord. So let's take a word for word of this. So you see, um, Yugaitam is uh, appearing like a great millennium. Nimeshena, a moment. So a moment appears like a, like a millennium. Chakshusha. And from the eyes, tears are falling like torrents of rain. So remember, we talked about Mahaprabhu's emotions. Tears are falling. And he's feeling this intense longing, intense separation. Um, and the whole world, shunyetam, appear, shunyetam, it appears void. Jagat, the whole world, sarvam, all. Govinda is Govinda. Krishna, virahinami, uh, is by, by separation from Krishna. So this whole world is like void. So this is uh, this is very advanced power. You know, this this is now the uh, we are on the verge of prema bhakti. So verse six and seven is 
bhav bhakti 7 and 8 is prema bhakti so 7 has both bhav and prema mixed so this is called gopi bhav intense separation or you can say radha bhav so this is the bhav of gopis or radha rani where there is intense longing very genuine very incredible overwhelming uh, emotions you know separation from krishna and the, and everything in this world is meaningless is useless for them everything is zero shunyatam or void and they cry in separation from him a uh, moment is like a millennium so this is the level of prem and bhav mixed rup goswami said about this that bhav bhakti is like rays of sun and prema bhakti is sun itself i thought that's very beautiful bhav is like rays of sun we are very close to sun and prema bhakti is like sun itself so i don't have much to share about this but it's you can compare it to gopi bhav how they will cry in separation from krishna when he would hide in rasleela you remember how he would hide in rasleela and then it says um iti gopya pragayantya pralappantya scha chitradha rurudhu su swaram rajan krishna darshan lalasa rurudhu su swaram rajan very loudly they will cry o king o king is parikshit maharaj they'll clap o parikshit those gopis used to cry very very loudly krishna darshan lalasa and they had this uh, lalasa this greed this intense desire to see krishna and even even if he hid for a moment during rasleela they cry rurudhu su swaram rajan so this is the mood that mahaprabhu is depicting then um let's see the verses that uh, kaviraj says or mahaprabhu says so he says udvege divasna jaya krishna haile juga sama varshara megha praya ashuvarishe nayana in my agitation or day never ends every moment seems like a millennium pouring incessant tears my eyes are like clouds in the rainy season so the tears are not stopping from the eyes incessant tears and every moment seems like a millennium it seems like the day will never end in so much agitation separation is there one of the classes that i heard they were saying this stage of a devotional of a devotee bhav bhakti or prem bhakti actually they they become almost dysfunctional they are actually not very useful in the society because they are very very they have to have to really control themselves to to you know do any services or preach or you know absorb their mind in 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 the in the world because they are so deeply immersed in the in this bhakti in this separation um then it says govinda virahe shunya haila tribhuvana tushana le pode yena na jaya jeevana the three worlds have become void because of separation from govinda i feel as if i'm burning alive in a slow fire tushana le anal anal means fire tushana le pode that i'm mean burning um and govinda virahe shunya haila tribhuvana tribhuvana is this world these the three worlds have become shunya krishna udasina haila karite parikshana sakhi sabha kahe krishne kare kara upekshana so my my friends say uh, that krishna has become indifferent to me uh, just to test my love better to disregard him that just forget him just ignore him he has become indifferent to you while shrimati radha rani so now he is in radha bhav when radha rani was thinking in this way the characteristics of natural love become manifest because of her pure heart the ecstatic symptoms of envy eagerness humility zeal supplication all became manifest at once in that mood shrimati radha rani was very agitated and therefore she spoke a verse of advanced devotion to her gopi friends and we are coming up to the last verse so radha rani is speaking this verse so now we are not even saying mahaprabhu is speaking this verse kaviraj is saying radha rani is speaking this verse what is she saying in the mood of um where great agitation she spoke a verse to her friends and her friends are telling her to ignore krishna but what did she say sei bhave prabhu sei shloka ucharila shloka ucharite tad rupa apane haila in the same spirit of ecstasy chaitanya mahaprabhu recited that verse and as soon as he did so he felt like shrimati radharani so he is in the he he is remember that he is krishna in the mood of radharani 
So he's manifesting the mood of Radha Rani, the Radha Bhav. So he said the same verse. He recited that verse that Radha Rani recited. Um, what is that verse? This is the last verse of Shikshashtakam. It says, Ashlishya va padratam pinashtuma Adarshanam marmahatam karotuva Yathatathava viddhatulam pato Matpranathastusa evanapara So, <clears throat> let me show you the word for word. This verse can be misunderstood sometimes, so I don't want you to misunderstand. Um, it says, Ashlishya va padratam pinashtuma. Um, word to word is, Ashlishya means whether you embrace me with great pleasure. So we are saying whether Krishna embraces us. Va padratam, we who have fallen at his lotus feet. Pinashtu. Or let him trample me. Either he embraces us or he tramples us. Adarshana, by not being visible to me. Marmahatam, he leaves me broken hearted. Let him make, uh, let him make me broken hearted. It means, karotu means let him make. Yatha tatha, however he likes. Yatha tatha, jaise bhi. Vidhadhatu, let him do. Lampata, lampat word um, has a very different meaning in this world. It means a debauchee. Debauchee means like a, like a player, like somebody who plays with people's hearts, um, like a playboy type of, so a lampata is a debauchee like that. Who mixes with, sorry, who mixes with other women? So, so this we should not misunderstand as a, a lumpert in this world uh, has a very bad connotation. Mat pran nathas, but you are the lord of my life only. Nobody else. Na par apara, nobody else. So whether you trample me under your feet or whether you embrace me, whether you leave me broken hearted by not being present before me. Um, However you wish to treat me, whether you um, ignore me by, you know, paying attention to others, like a lumpert, uh, you're still the Lord of my heart unconditionally. So you, I still accept you as the Lord of my heart. My, you, He will always be my worshipful Lord unconditionally. So this is Radha Rani saying, you know, because she's feeling envy when Krishna is meeting with other gopis that he is leaving me broken hearted by disappearing from me. But actually this is... a uh, applicable to us because sometimes we feel Krishna's presence a lot of times we don't so we, we should say that okay even if you leave me broken hearted by not being present before me by not embracing me you're trampling me you're giving me a rough time hard time putting me through misery it's okay you're still the worshipable lord of my heart that should be our mood so in this way we can apply this verse otherwise this verse is very hard for us to understand because it's Radha Bha which means that uh, she's saying that even if you, um, however you treat me, I will always be your servant. You will always be my Lord. And we should also have that mood that even if there is difficulty, we do not blame him. We do not turn away from him. Rather, we hold his hand more tightly. We embrace him more tightly. We take shelters of him and his representatives, the devotees, more fiercely in difficulty. Not, not that we just turn away from him. So that means um, whether you embrace me or trample me, Rakho bhi maro bhi, jo ichha tohar, nitya dasa prati toha, tuva adhikar. So you have the adhikar, you have the complete control of me. Rakho bhi maro bhi, jo ichha tohar, whatever you want. Bhakti Vinod Thakur says in that beautiful song, Manas Deho Geho. Manas Deho Geho, jo ke chumora, ar pilu tova pade, nand kishmora. Rakho bhi maro bhi, jo ichha to haat, nitya da saprati, tova adhikara. Like that. So, jiva ne marane gati, ar nahi mor. Right? Radha Krishna prana mora, uh, jugal kishor, jiva ne marane gati, ar nahi mor. So, or, there is no other lord. There is no other maintainer. It's not like when we are... In difficulty, then we start doing some astrology or some demigod worship or some other. No, ananya bhakti, ananya chintayan tumam ye jana paripasate. Tesham nitya bhyukta na yoga shema baham nehu. It's not like we start doing some upais when we are in difficult times. I know it's it's uh, easier said than done, but that's what keval bhakti or ananya bhakti means. That he is a worshipable lord of my heart in all times. Uh, maam ekam, maam ekam. Sharanam Braja. Not that you change sides. No. 
अनन्य चिंतन तुम हम अनन्य भक्ति राइट सो रिमेम्बर दैट ही इज जीवने निधने नित्यम राधा कृष्णा गतिर मम जीवन में भी निधन में मरने में भी या फिर समटाइम्स पीपल से जीवन ना धने इवन इफ वी हैव नो मनी जीवन और ना धने और निधने इन डेथ और लाइफ और डिफिकल्टी और हैप्पीनेस बोथ टाइम्स राधा कृष्णा गतिर मम राइट सो दैट इज द मूड ऑफ दिस वर्ड्स uh that only krishna is our lord is our maintainers and his happiness is our goal his service is our goal uh nothing else uh i think the last thing i'll show you is the verses that come after this uh, just a few more i think and then we can stop so after this what does how this kaviraj wraps up he says i am a maid servant at the lotus feet of krishna he is the embodiment of transcendental happiness if he likes he can tightly embrace me and makes me feel oneness with him or by not giving me his audience he may corrode my mind and body nevertheless it is he who is the lord of my life so again using different words he is saying the same things ami krishna pada dasi teno rasa sukha rashi alingiya kare atma satha like that then he says my dear friend sakhi rahe just hear the decision of my mind krishna is the lord of my life in all conditions whether he shows me affection or kills me by giving me unhappiness sometimes krishna gives up the company of other gopis and becomes controlled mind and body by me does he manifest my good fortune and gives others distress by performing his loving affairs with me so sometimes he'll pay more attention to us sometimes he'll pay more attention to others and um that is okay or since after all he is very cunning obstinate debauchy with a propensity to cheat he takes to the company of other women so now she is lamenting he then indulges in affairs with them to give distress to my mind nevertheless he is still the lord of my life so for us you know this conjugal mood is not there so we are understanding it in a different way that he is um sometimes we are put in difficult situations and we can see that as arrangement as plan of the lord and not um not lament not complain and still know that krishna has some bigger plan for us in this in this journey uh, the, the the difficulty we have been put through is is for a reason for our purification uh, it serves a bigger purpose and it is temporary um so that's uh, all i had to share about the shikshashtakam prayers um, so there are eight verses and they go from very simple of cleaning of consciousness to the radha bhav as you saw um and uh, it was the genius of mahaprabhu that he gave us uh, no other composition he did not leave any other literature no other uh, purports to anything or vedic um, um, you know commentaries nothing else he left uh, all his disciples did everything else he just left us these eight verses and in eight verses he put his complete you know heart and soul and ecstasy and simple mood of, of sadhana bhakti of sa- devotional practice to prema bhakti um so that's the genius of these verses um okay i'll stop here anybody wants to share anything or any questions corrections realizations anything you did not understand who wants to share rakshita mate ji want to share something if you have heard something somewhere or hema mate ji ravi prabhu shital mate ji please share no matri i don't think so i have anything else to share but you've explained it so nicely and i really uh, like that point because sometime you know uh, uh, when you go in front of the lord and sometime you know you're in a situation which is not favorable and then you go to the temple then you know after this, you know seeing the deity sometime during the kirtan or something happens that you start crying but understanding this thing that uh, you know we are on all uh, you know on the shraddha level not understanding that the tears are coming out of my eyes because i'm very very attached to the lord because once sometime that problem gets resolved you suddenly feel oh everything is okay and then you do not have the same feeling when you go in front of the deities so understanding this that we are in the shraddha bhav and anything if the tears are coming out of my eyes that could be a reason that i'm more emotional and maybe i'm in a situation i'm not able to deal with uh but uh, you know uh, we are not on the bhav level that we we are shedding tears because of uh, the se- feeling separation from krishna and the second point the ma- all the points were wonderful mathiji but these are few points which really 
uh, I really liked. And uh, the second uh, point which you mentioned is about to be uh, uh, in the last, uh, try to be in the last, uh, you know, in line when it's coming to uh, to serve Lord. Because, uh, you know, with this imperfections we have, or the level we are in bhakti, try to serve the Lord directly is just not possible. You'll end up ma making so many mistakes. So try to follow, even if you have to serve the Lord by the instruction of guru or a senior devotee. So you should always uh, try, have in mind to follow the instruction rather than trying to serve the Lord directly. So still you should give credit to the person who has given you an opportunity to serve the Lord or any service in the temple. But if you try to uh, directly serve the Lord, uh, that's not possible because, you know, as you mentioned that disciplic succession, it all happened in, you know, very, very long time, right? So there are people though already up on, very much up on the ladder. But if you start serving, you can become the, you know, a little source of, Serving Krishna. So, yeah, Mataji, that's all. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. You nicely summarized. Anybody else wants to share anything? Hema Mataji, Ravi Prabhu, Rekha Mataji, Shital Mataji. Any points? No, Rakshita Mataji covered it all. I was going to say the same thing, but Shraddha I covered it. <laughs> you, you explained it very nicely, Mataji. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for taking our time. Um, I thought it will prepare our consciousness for Gaur Purnima. Uh, this is Mahaprabhu's composition and uh, goes from lowest stage to highest, incredibly deep stage. Uh, so we can start singing them, learning them. Uh, okay. Any other? Uh, Hima Mataji, you want to say anything? Okay, then uh, okay, we'll stop here. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll meet next Sunday for Gaur Purnima. And um, please keep preparing your consciousness. Listen more and chant more and chant more sincerely. Um, thank you again for giving me the opportunity to do the seva. Hare Krishna. Vancha kalpta rubis chakripa sindhu vevacha. Patita nam pavane bhyo veshna vebhyo namunama. Gurve gaur chandraya. Radhikaya Tadalai, Krishna, Krishna Bhaktaya, Tad Bhaktaya Namunama. Gaur Purnima Mahamatsav ki jai, Shri Manchaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai, Shri Shikshashtakam prayers ki jai, Shri La Prabhupada ki jai, all glories to the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna, all glories, all glories, all glories to Guru and Gaurang. Hare Krishna. Thank you everyone. Hari Bhol. Thank you, Mataji. Hari Bhol, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.